been rocking, man, for about like what five months now. Minute now, it's been a about minute. About five, six mm -hmm. months now. And I might introduce them to my community. And I'm gonna be real with you. I'm real protective right. of my community. I know that. Right. I'm real, real pr protective of my students and what I expose them to or who I put in front of them. But um, man, I I jumped out there, man. I prayed about it and uh we 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 uh did the merger and uh bro, it's been it's been amazing ever since. Mm. Wow. Adam, what, what did you expect to come out of that first connection with Alex? Really, I didn't have any expectations, to be honest with you. You know, when when the, the, the story with the Rob, it, it was a funny story. You know, now that we look at it, and, and I know Alex don't mind me telling this story. <laughs> but, like, I would say about a year ago, you know, I saw what Alex was doing. You know, Alex has, a, has an amazing following. I saw how he was trying to make it simple for the people. You know, simple for people to get in a truck and give them a blueprint and really how to understand it. So I shot Alex a DM about a year ago. And um, he never read it, right? <laughs> he never read it. <laughs> I knew it was gonna come out. I've right? been there. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, you know, <laughs> um, but 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 that was funny though because then one day I was it was a Friday afternoon and um, I was just walking outside and having a good time and the phone rang. I'm like, Who is this calling me at like after hours? You know, I'm not taking no after hours phone calls. Right, right. And I was like, Nah, let me answer it. Right. And I heard the dude was like, Hey, my name is is, is Rob. I'm like, Rob, who? He's like, Rob, you know, with Good Energy Worldwide. I was like, yeah, I know who Good Energy Worldwide is. Right. Because I see Alex on everything. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so me and Rob, we start talking. And, you know, next thing he's like, yeah, I just want to meet you up with my, my cousin Alex. You know what I'm saying? I want to meet you up with Callie. So I, at that point, man, I thought we were just going to meet, talk about Interpol. Mm. But as soon as we got on the phone, we the first call was a Zoom. And so me and him, we looking at each other on the Zoom. He feeling me out. We kind of you know each, other side each other up. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, ah. next thing I know, man, he was like, man, he was like, man, let's let's just let's jump on a call next week. So we jump on a call next week. We ain't talk nothing. We ain't talk no business. We ain't mm. talk no interview. I was like, man, this, we gotta do something. Mm. He's like, bro, we gotta do something. Okay. He was like, man, because you know, with, with with the people out there, you know, right now the people are struggling in a lot of different areas. Um, and that's just that's just facts. You know, the majority of people are in this business. They struggle in a variety of areas. Now, one of the things they don't struggle in is the desire to be successful. We just want to help bring that together. That's a fact. So we just got together. And then the first time I linked up with him in Atlanta, you know, he, he brought me up to Atlanta. You know, we sat down, we talked, and we exchanged waters and stuff, man. We had a good time, man. So, was, you know, it was all love. It was all love. What, what, what were some of those missing pieces, man? Because you, you've been doing the training, you know, for a while now. You started out consulting. Right, then you move to the portal, the number one trucking portal in the world, right? My man, you know what I'm saying? What, what were some of those missing pieces that you thought that Adam could bring uh, to, to your platform? Yeah, man, you know, I call, I call Adam Mr. Numbers. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I call right. him Mr. Numbers. Um, I'm really good at what I do. I'm really passionate about it. I've, I've really created a really good blueprint. Um, but I loved how intentional he was with as far as like the numbers part of the game. As far as like the expenses and um <clears throat> and the actual tech tech side of the game, you know what I'm saying? Like that was something that I hadn't really tapped into. And when I, you know, as again as I'm talking to him, I'm realizing like, yo, ooh, my students can really benefit. Like my my students can get a lot of value from the number side. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I think in trucking, bro, everybody we all chasing the bread, right? Everybody chasing the money. We all trying to, you know, what I mean, take care of our families. But I think that um, once people really get a hold of their numbers and know like what their expenses are, know what their break even points are, et cetera. I feel like that's how you really maximize the trucking when you when you really get a hold of that part mm, of it. Right. And that's what he specialized in. Gotcha. So, you know, me, like I'm 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 good at what I'm good at, but I'm also humble enough to know where I need work at. Right. And I tell people like I'd never call myself um certain names because I'm always a student. I'm always a coachable, you know what I'm saying? And right. I think that's what helped me take it to the next level. And that's what helped me like really the the as you can see like the progress has been going up and up and up and the reason yeah. why is because i've always been open to improvement right you know what i'm saying right. so that's 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 literally like the main thing that i saw in him mm. and i was like now nah, we're gonna have to bring that to the to the to the culture i love that adam how, how did you find your voice within that network network because this is an already established network right it's they, they they've developed a cadence at Good Energy Worldwide. Like, how did you find your voice and be able to fit within that? I've been in this business 20 years. It's not about me finding my voice. It was just me speaking mm. you know, at the end of the day. You know, and I remember like the worst person I've ever worked for, my worst boss, told me the best advice I ever heard. And he was like, Adam, the world needs to hear what you got to say. Mm. And so I did, that's when I brought, what I bring to the table is just, it's just me. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's intention, it's risk experience, and it's just passion. And yeah. I just put that out and I exude that in every conversation I have. When it talks about trucking, 
nobody's going to be as excited about it as me. Nobody's okay. going to have as much energy and passion about the industry as me. And I put myself in that, in that room against anybody. And I bring that to every conversation. And I don't care who it is that sits in front of me and wants to be successful. I want to pour into every single person that I can. Mm. And in his network, his whole moniker was good energy. Right. Right. Just giving good vibes. And one of the things that, that I loved about, about what Alex was doing, Alex is a pick me up type person. Yeah. Like, I don't care how bad things are going. Alex, I, I remember Alex did a live. And I don't know if I, I told him this story. He did a live during the uh, pandemic when it first started. Okay. Raced, plummeted. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about like plummeted, 90 cents a mile on drive bands. Right. Right. I remember on that call, that, that one live that I jumped on, I was just listening. He was just picking his people up. Yeah. He's like, hey, you know what? Things are turning around. Just stay the course. Yeah. Stay the course. Just, you know, slow it down. Stay the course. And that's right. the one thing I was like, it's a little different, man. That's a little different. <laughs> he ain't even trying to just, just trying to get more people to sign up. Right. And taking care of the people as well. I mean, like with me, I'm just like he said, he's protective of his network. I'm protective of me and I'm protective of mine. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm not going to sit and go into a situation where I don't feel like it's beneficial to the ultimate value, which is the people. Yeah. I want to take care of the people. No doubt. No and, doubt. And that was, that was, that was big for me. I, I like that. How, how receptive were your people to Adam, Alex? Because I know you probably got some feedback initially. Like, who's this guy hopping on the on the on the coaching calls? Like, where where'd he come from? You know what I'm saying? You know what? I think it was it was a shock a little bit at first because you got to remember, man. I've been doing this by myself right. since day one. You know what I'm saying? I dropped my my photo October 5th, 2018, yeah. and literally like one man show besides my behind the scenes team. You know, here at Good Energy. Yeah. So. I think it was like, okay, Alex ain't never did this before. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. And because of the fact that I never did it before and I hadn't led them wrong yet, they trusted me. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So I was letting them know, hey, look, this is what it is. And I was real transparent with them letting them know why we, why we were doing it. And everybody loved it. I haven't had any uh, negative pushback on it since. Mm. Yeah. Now that's dope. And I, wanna, I just want to follow up what he was saying, you know, during the pandemic, it was it was some weird times, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And sure. I literally went live every single night during the pandemic, right? Every single night, um, I went live to my to my to my to my community, um, again to keep them uplifted. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, I didn't have all the answers. Right. It was something new for everybody. Right. But um, this is deeper than just trucking for me. It was really like, it's it's really like um. A family to me, like my followers, my my portal family, yeah. like they pouring to me so much. So that was my opportunity to give back to them, bro. Like it wasn't. I, I turned off my ads and everything during the pandemic. Mm. Like I turned the ads off. It was really just about me just pouring into them, keeping them motivated. And um, and I just told them like, look, it's it's gonna come back. Like if you just have common sense, you know that okay. If the freight slowed down, if not as much freight and volume is is moving right now, this this freight sitting somewhere. Right. So I was just stressing to them about the money management during that time. I was stressing to them about making sure that you just cut down on some of your expenses and, and just make sure you just take care of your driver. Make sure like during this time, even if you're not making a lot of money, hold on to your driver, at least make sure that he's straight so that when, when everything turns around, you still got a driver and we could recoup that on the back end. Right. And I made the prediction, you know, me and Adam talked, I was like, yo, we made the prediction. Like once stuff started opening back up, it was going to turn back around. Right. And my exact prediction came true. And as you can see, the boom happened after the pandemic. It was crazy. And yeah. I predicted that. So, no doubt. yeah. No doubt. How, how is it, you know, I just want to talk about training people real quick, right, in the education space. Uh, I know you guys train a lot of people who are already entrepreneurs, right? They, they already have businesses. They've already had certain levels of success. H how is it training people who have already had success? To, to, to achieve new levels. You got to, you got to, it goes down to situational leadership. You know, it's just like, you know, if you've, if you've had success as a professional athlete, you had success as a, a restaurant owner, this is a completely different space. So we got to go to the very, very ground floor level, which is great about his portal. His portal really kind of digs into that ground floor. And then see, we are more like one-on-one, -on -one, hands on hand, guiding step by step along the way. Right. So with people that, that have been successful in a lot of variety, I hate to say it, but sometimes you got to bring them down a little bit for them to understand that you can't come in this cocky. Right. You can't come in this just because you were successful in real estate right. or you were successful in anything else. Because the, 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 I'm going to be honest with you, the odds are against you more than they are for you. Why is that? Because it's the failure rates of 80%. percent mm, got gotcha. you. Eight and, out of 10 as people As opposed like start. to any other type of right. business. Yeah, eight out of 10 people that start this, they, they, they fail because, you know, they, they get in it for a variety of reasons. They want to be successful, but they just don't have the tools. Right, right. Do you, do you find that that those entrepreneurs are more teachable than maybe someone who's just getting into the, into business for the first time in their life? Um, 
Say that one more time. Do you find that people who are already entrepreneurs, right, who have already uh, had some type of entrepreneurship experience, are they more teachable than people who are just fresh in the business? Yeah. Or is it vice versa? Yeah, I think they are because, you know, I tell people all the time, um, I love doing business with people who understands business. Mm. Right? Yeah. Everybody don't understand business. And when I say that, I mean that, you know, people are not realistic sometimes when it comes down to approaching a new venture. People don't have patience sometimes, right? right. People that are brand new to the entrepreneur space, they don't have patience and they think that everything is uh, uh, microwaved. Right. Right? Right. Um, so the people who, are, who have experience in entrepreneurship, I think that they understand it's a process. And most businesses, when you start a new business, don't even make a profit their first year. Mm. Right? No doubt. But, but then you got the people that are new that think, okay, as soon as I invest my money on, on, on week four, I should be making profits, or especially I should be spending profits. No, right. no, it don't work like that. So I love uh, working with people who understand business because those people are definitely coachable yeah. and they're a lot easier to work with. I like that. I like that. Adam, you always say something, and I pay attention to it. You always say you want to leave the industry better than you found it, right? So how are you leaving good energy better than you found it? Well, I think the biggest thing, one of the things with, with, with good energy and innovative, you know, <clears throat> is, is the education side of it. When I started in this industry, there was no, there was no resource. I got behind the truck at, you know, when I was 21 years old, bought my first truck when I was 23. I didn't have a blueprint. I didn't have nobody to go to. That's number one, it's providing a resource. Secondly, it's providing a significantly trusted resource. Right. Someone that has the information, that's real information. And we didn't have that, you right. know, we didn't have that going back there. Going back again, one of the things that I, you know, another thing that I, that I see that's so dope and it's not under my control, but it's something that I push is the diversity, right. you know, cause back right. then, and, I'm, and I mean diversity as a whole, because back then, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna be honest with you, seeing a female truck driver was just like, wow, back yeah, then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now we got female bosses out here and I love it. So thing. when I have the opportunity to really kind of pour in the people that back then, 20 years ago, didn't have a chance. Yeah. Man, I'm gonna dig in, bro. Yeah. I'm gonna dig in.